بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. Continuing on in our lessons in the Islamic Creed by Sheikh Ahmed Al Atiq, حفظه الله تعالى. We reach the chapter chapter thirteen, which is Tawassul. It's talking about Tawassul, which is uh, intercession. Tawassul or intercession, it is drawing close to something, and it is of two types. And of course, uh, Tawassul that we're referring to is Tawassul of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We're talking about ibadah. We're talking about issues of shirk and kufr and issues of tawheed and iman. And Tawassul bi Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The mashroor or the lawful type of intercession is of several types. Number one, drawing closer to Allah by His divine names and attributes. So by supplicating to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Ya Hayyul Ya Qayyum, Ya Sami'u Dua, things like this, supplicating to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by His divine names and attributes that He Subhanahu wa Taala possesses alone and is. His his uh, divine uh, attributes are perfect and free from imperfection. The second way in which we can make tawassul is by drawing closer to Allah the Almighty with good deeds, which the one seeking intercession has performed. So, for example, as we have in the illustrated for us from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he mentioned the story of the people who came before his time, who were the, the people who were in the cave and they made tawassul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be freed from the cave freed from the cave from being trapped in there and as they mentioned some of the good deeds and things and sins that they refrained from this removed the boulder from the mouth of the cave so much so to an extent to they were finally able to be freed from the cave so this shows us that drawing closer to Allah the Almighty with good deeds is another way in which a person can seek intercession with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing with good deeds that you have performed. The third way in which we can draw nearer to Allah or seek His intercession, subhana, is by drawing closer to Allah the Almighty through the perfect realization of monotheism or the actualization of monotheism by Actualizing Tawheed, Tawakkal ala Allah Saheha, by truly uh, putting our trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, by these and 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 leaving all of our affairs to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, then this is one way that we draw nearer to Allah Subhanahu, that we don't put our trust in uh, the creation unless absolutely uh, necessary, but also part of Tawassul or part of tawakkul, meaning to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that we اعتماد على الله وفعل أسباب that we rely solely upon Allah or leave our affairs with Allah while doing actions that will be conducive to what we're trying to attain. For example, if someone wants to uh, increase their, their wealth, they want to be able to take care and provide for their family, then this individual should put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, they should also take actions towards increasing their risk, like looking for work, like uh, selling in, in, uh, selling items or go gathering items to sell or what have you. They need to make take actions towards achieving their ends, which is to provide for their families. So they do that while at the same time putting their trust in the Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is tawakkal sahihah And the ulama have written extensively and has spoken extensively about this issue. And for, if someone wishes to go further in, into detail, go to some of the books of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And they have uh, a lot of beneficial uh, statements and um, treatises which are regarding these issues. So drawing closer to Allah the Almighty through the perfect realization of monotheism drawing closer to Allah the Almighty through making uh, the next one is drawing closer to Allah the Almighty through making one's weakness and neediness apparent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we uh, we check ourselves 
that we look internally and look at our own shortcomings. All of us know that we have certain sins that we don't want anyone to know about. But Allah knows and sees everything that we do. And with that, if you want to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then reflect upon your sins. Reflect upon your imperfections. Reflect upon your shortcomings. Those things which are known to the people and those things which are unknown to the people. Reflect upon those things and know for sure that we have no right to be arrogant. We have no right to uh, think that we're, we're up there and we're better than other people. Because in fact, some of us on the outward, we have an outward appearance of something good, of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but inward we're filthy. وَعِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ and that's why the Prophet ﷺ said, When he was referring to that morsel of flesh, that if it is sick, then the whole body is sick, and if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy, and it's the heart. So, concentrating on your heart, concentrating on your own shortcomings, not being um, uh, surprised at your own self. Oh, mashallah, I did this, and it was so great. The way I... I do such and such actions, I'm so great, oh I'm so handsome, I'm so this, I'm so whatever, I have so much wealth, I have, I'm, I do this better than other people. No, in fact you need to go back and look at your shortcomings because surely we have plenty of them. So by reflecting on your shortcomings and making them apparent to your Lord, meaning pleading to Allah, supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, oh Allah, you know that I'm, I, you know, I have these these sins and you know I'm in need of you please please forgive me please uh, uh, you know you know grant me what I need and what what is good for me and, and what have you and you make your supplication in this this uh, manner the Prophet Sallallahu used to make supplication and, 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 and taught us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam how to one of the ways in which one of the beautiful supplications in which we can do this La ilaha illa La ilaha illa ant subhanaka inni kuntu min al-zalimeen There is no God worthy of worship except you uh, Except you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And wa inni kuntu min al And verily I was one of the wicked sinners or, or wrongdoers Subhanallah So this is in qisar al-nafs This is how we break ourselves down this is how we bring ourselves down to the level where we need to be, that we need to be in humility before our Lord, because we're nothing. All of us are going to die, no matter how beautiful or how handsome, how much money, how much buildings they have, how much this, how much that, all of you are going to be put in the same, put in a grave. All of your bodies are going to deteriorate. All of you guys are going to be resurrected in front of your Lord. So don't think because now you're the big man or the or the, the, the famous woman or this and that and the other, you have status, that it's going to benefit you. It's not going to benefit you. People may talk about you and remember you. Oh, yeah, this person was, was famous. This person had a lot of money. This person had the best songs. This person that had this was so beautiful. And this person had so much jewelry and whatever. But it's not going to benefit you in the grave. And... Uh, to make another very important fact where there's uh, it's actually relevant is also people making dawah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first we should have knowledge another important aspect of that is being humble to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that also we should busy ourselves if someone is busy doing dawah they should also be reflected upon themselves so never think because this da'i or this talib al ilm or this individual is getting fame and whatever and they're doing a lot of lectures and they're popular and this and that and the other and they're getting paid for their dawah or whatever never make that your goal make your goal to raise the kalim of Allah that you're spreading Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion for his sake subhanahu not to make yourself famous so also bring yourself down because if a person begins to put themselves out there in order to big themselves up so to speak or make themselves look greater then this becomes a type of hizbiyah, a type of partisanship, calling to themselves. So instead, break yourself down. Break yourself down, bring yourself down to the level it needs to be. Humble before your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making toba constantly and drawing nearer to Allah with that action. So that's how we come closer to Allah. That's another way of intercession. Another, uh, the fifth type of uh, mashroor intercession is coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by asking a righteous living person to supplicate for you. 
So asking someone who's living to supplicate on your behalf, for example, maybe you say Sheikh, or you say to this student of knowledge, or you say to this righteous man who you see is you apparent on the apparent you see only good from him, he's always in the masjid, he's always doing this, or she's always making tahajid, she's always doing this, you know, please make dua for me. Please supplicate for me. You know? Because on the they appear to be of those people who could be from the Oliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah loves. One of the friends in, uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people are supported by Allah, who Allah loves. So if that is the case, of course you want to have them supplicate for you, to ask Allah, oh Allah, please forgive so-and-so. However, you have the ability yourself to supplicate to your Lord as well. So some of the Salaf even dislike that, even dislike asking a, a righteous pious person because they didn't want to have anything in between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the scholars differ over this issue. However, it is still mishroor, you know, that you can ask. And we know this even from the hadith uh, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's a very long hadith and in the end, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by a man, he said, uh, uh, he First it was Ukasha ibn Muhsin and he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Allah He was talking about the seventy thousand people who will enter paradise without any reckoning. He said, Oh oh he said, Messenger of Allah, supplicate to Allah <coughs> to to make me from amongst those people who enter paradise, the seventy thousand, without any hisab, without any reckoning. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, And to minhum. And then another man got up and he said, Ya Rasulullah, edu Allah and yajalani minhum. And he said, Ask Allah to, to make me from amongst them. And the Prophet said, Sabbakaka biha ukasha. That ukasha had beat you. He already beat you. Okay? So, and, and the scholars explain the many reasons for that, that perhaps this man was not uh, necessarily worthy of, of that. Uh, station or and, and and various other reasons but the shahid here the point that we want to mention is the fact that this uh, is a way to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by asking a living righteous person to uh, supplicate for you and look at this from that hadith Uqash ibn Muslim radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he asked the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam while he was alive and he asked him, supplicate for me. He didn't say, O oh, Messenger of Allah. He didn't supplicate to the Prophet ﷺ. He never supplicated to the Prophet ﷺ, nor did any of the Sahaba or Tabi'een or Itzba'a Tabi'een or Ahl Sunnah. They didn't do this. They didn't supplicate to the Prophet and say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, please do this for me. O oh, Messenger of Allah, please help my wife have a baby. O oh, Messenger of Allah, please increase my risk. Abidin, a'udhu billah min dhalika. But rather, they sought to wassal and to wakil on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had their, their relationship with their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Islam frees us from. Islam frees us from the imprisonment of shirk that we find, for example, in Catholicism, where they have to go and make their atonement to the priest. We don't have to do that in Islam. You don't have to go to your imam and confess your sins. You don't have to go to your sheikh and confess your sins. You don't have to go to your da'i and confess your sins. You don't have to go to this person or that person and confess your sins. Abedin, no. But and rather, that's between you and your Lord, and you supplicate to Him, and you seek forgiveness from Him, and He will forgive you if you're sincere, and if you meet the conditions of Tawbah. So, so, coming closer to Allah by asking a righteous living person. The sixth thing, and the last thing the Shaykh mentioned, was coming closer to Allah by confessing one's sins. So, by, by seeking, uh, by coming closer to Allah, by making a stafar, by saying, Oh Allah, you know I did this. Please forgive me, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya... Ya Ghafuru Rahim, Ya Ghafuru Wudud. You know, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes and, and humbling yourself and seeking forgiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and confessing your sins to Allah. This is beautiful. This is the beauty of Islam. It's about Tawheed. It's about worshiping Allah alone. You don't have to go to the priest. You don't have to go to the minister. You don't have to go to the preacher. You don't have to go to the, to the monk. You don't have to go to this one. You just go to Allah. You ask, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, rectify my condition and affairs. And may Allah rectify all of our conditions and affairs. The second type is the prohibited type of intercession, and then we'll end there. The, the, the prohibited type of intercession, 
The first type is requesting or supplicating to the dead and asking their intercession. And this is from the major shirk. This is a big problem that we have in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this time. Because in the early generations, they didn't face this problem. These are later, in a, uh, later innovations. This is, uh, this is bid'ah mukaffara. This is the kind of innovation that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Going to the dead. I don't care if it's your dead sheikh. I don't care if it's the dead sheikh of this tribe. I don't care if it's your uncle, your grandmother, your grandpa, whatever. I don't care if it's wali falan. I don't care if you're going to the graves of the Sahaba. I don't care if you're going to the grave of the Prophet Wasallam. Do not ask of them to, uh, do not supplicate to them. Do not supplicate to the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Do not supplicate to Jesus Wasallam. Do not supplicate to Moses Wasallam. Do not supplicate to the angel Jibreel Wasallam. No. If you cannot supplicate to those people and the angel Jibreel who were the closest to Allah, then what about the Sahaba? You can't go to their graves and, and supplicate to them. And then what about your sheikh or your supposed wali? He could, he or she could be a wali. I'm not doubting that there are the uliya. We know this. We know this. This is apparent from the nasus. But you will find nothing from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Sahaba that authenticates going to the dead and supplicating to them. This is reserved for the Hindus. This is reserved to the Sikhs. This is reserved to the Catholics. This is reserved to the Christians. This is reserved for the other religions that believe in supplicating to dead. That's for them. It's not for the Muslim. And that's the major shirk for the person who goes to the grave and makes tawaf and supplicates and believes that dead person is going to help them. If those dead were going to be able to help you in your supplication and answer your supplication, then couldn't they have stopped their own death? And right when they died and the akramakum Allah, the, uh, the body fluids were released from them, they, they, didn't, they couldn't stop that. So stay away from the shirk. Stay away from supplicating to other than Allah, the Almighty, the one who created us, the only one worthy of worship, subhanahu. The second type of uh, prohibited intercession is asking Allah by the honor of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or from other than him, and this is innovation. So this is not bid'ah mukaffara, this is bid'ah ghayr mukaffara. This is the kind of innovation which doesn't take you out of the fold of Islam, it's just a major sin. It's a major sin you want to stay away from. We should never belittle major sins, it's an innovation, it's evil. وَكُلَّ بِدَعْتَنْ دَرَالَ كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمُ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said all bid'ah is in the fire. All of it's in the fire, stay away from it. The third type of prohibited intercession is asking Allah by the rights of created things. So stay away from these types of, uh, of innovations and these ways of going astray. And the shahid, which can summarize all of this, plain and simple, come closer to Allah by asking Allah, supplicating to Allah, asking and begging your Lord Subhanahu. He, he can hear you. He can see you. He knows all things. And he is the, the one who can help and support you and will enter you into paradise. So ask him, Subhana. You don't need to go and seek intercession from those who cannot intercede on their own behalf. And uh, a last important issue is that um, you know we should reserve all of our worship to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and avoid any and all forms of kufr and shirk and in addition to that, that another way in which we can, which is contained in there, in that we've heard the scholars mention, is that you can seek intercession, of course, or this is a type of intercession or wasila, by seeking knowledge. By seeking knowledge, or it's also a type of barakah too, tabarak, that you're seeking uh, blessings by the knowledge of the scholars. So it means you don't go to your scholar, your sheikh, and, and shake his hand and touch him and kiss his head and think you're going to get reward from Allah, that, you're going to, that this is going to bring you closer or blessings. No. But rather, but rather, you seek the blessings from those living scholars from their knowledge and from those who deceased by their knowledge, going to their books, benefiting from their rasa'in, benefiting from their fatawa, benefiting from their tapes if they have things that are recorded. That's how we, 
we benefit from them. How do we benefit from Imam Nawawi? We benefit from Imam Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, a Shafi'i. We benefit from him by his books. His books are left for us. There's hardly a household from Ahl Sunnah or Ahl Bid'ah even that doesn't have Riyadh Salihin and and his and Arba'in and Nawawi. These beautiful, beneficial books. Or how do we seek uh, blessings? And 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 uh, and and so forth from Ibn Taymiyyah from his books Mijmu'a Fatawa. How do we seek it from Imam Abu Hanifa? How do we seek it from Imam uh, uh, Shafi'i? How do we e we seek it from Imam Malik? How do we seek it from Imam uh, Imam Ahmed? We seek them from those great Imams of the Sunnah. We seek it. F we seek the blessings from their books, what they left behind, their knowledge. That's how we get blessings from Allah. We don't make supplication to them. We don't go visit their graves and supplicate to them. Abedin. No. It's to Allah. Your worship is to Allah. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.